Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a fun little project. I'm taking my cat Baxter's favorite scratching barn and replacing the carpet bit that he has uh, destroyed with all of his scratching over the year. I'll probably be joined by uh, my assistant's Corey. Probably Baxter will show up too. I did a lot of research to try to find something that was going to be environmentally friendly and cat friendly to replace the carpeting on his barn with. It is his favorite scratching toy and I could not find a replacement anywhere online that was a scratching barn. So I decided that I would have to replace the carpeting myself. I did intend to put, replace all of the carpeting, but on further inspection, I noticed just the silo part of the barn was destroyed. So that's all I'm going to be fixing today. Uh, I have a lot of carpet that I actually purchased so that I can fix the whole thing in the future, but also so that I can make them, um, all of my cats, something new down the line um, for their all their scratching needs. Hopefully I'll fuck this up. carpeting in your home it's important to take your pets and your children into consideration and there is a lot of things to know about carpeting a lot of carpeting has volatile organic chemicals or VOCs involved in all stages of its creation and installation specifically you want to look into the types of carpet fiber that you want to use the types of backing that the fibers of the carpet are adhered to, the glue that is used to connect the fibers to the backing, and then also you'll want to consider the type of glue or adhesive used for applying your carpet to the surface that you intend to apply it to. For this project, I don't have to think about the underlayment or padding because I'm just going to be using adhesive to connect the carpet directly to the scratch barn. But if you were putting this carpet down in a house or something, or on something much larger um, that's going to be walked on, you might want to consider what has been put in your backing. You want to look for a fiber that is non-toxic. If you're opting to use a natural fiber, such as wool, you want to make sure the wool has not been dyed with chemicals. Ideally, you'd want to avoid polyester fibers according to some of the research that I've done on pet friendly carpeting. But if you choose a polyester fiber, which are PET or PTT fibers, look for those that are free of PFOAs. As far as adhesives go, you want to opt for natural latex adhesives, and that would be the adhesives between the backing and the fiber. And obviously the choice is always something that is low in VOC or VOC free. Now VOCs is a term that represents chemical additives that are part of a conventional carpet. What you want to find is a carpet that's free of dyes and chemicals in the processing and that also is free of topical fiber treatments such as stain guards. Specific chemical additives to be weary of are flame retardants, which are the most harmful type usually found in polyurethane padding, but also in aluminum hydroxide, which are added to the fibers. Next one is permethrin, permethrin pesticide moth proofing, which is specifically added to many wool carpeting. Next, you want to watch out for anti, any antimicrobials, 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 which can be added to the backing, the glues, and the face fiber. I'm probably gonna get this next one wrong. Pyrothyrine, pyrothyrin, pyrothyrin, pyrothyrin zinc. 
zinc pyrithione. <laughs> and or potassium olate, which is also often used in fibers. And then we go on to any stain repellents. The most common one on the market is Scotch Guard, also called perfluorobutane sulfonic acid, which is often added to the top layer of a textile. The acronym for this product is PFOAs, and these are considered a priority to avoid in anything. There are also other things such as anti-static treatments, such as quaternary ammonia, which can be added to fibers. Things to consider are off-gassing effects of padding of the carpet, which is the underlayment, which goes between the floor and the carpet and adds a, adds a little extra padding beneath your feet. Polyurethane, rubber, and natural latex backings all have off-gassing potential. And then of course, toxic adhesives, which is the glue or tape that you're using to adhere the carpet to your padding or flooring. And also can be used to glue the seams of carpet pieces together. What you want to look for in a carpeting is something called CRI Green Labeling Plus certification. This certification certifies that a carpet is low emission carpeting, which means it's going to have less off gassing. There are some good carpeting brands on the market. The best ones will be labeled Ultra Fresh and Pureback, which are new technologies that are considered to be more environmentally friendly. As with anything, the long-term effect of these technologies is yet uncertain. So please make sure that you do your due diligence in using peer-reviewed research when trying to determine what is the best choice for your house, your family, and your pets. When I was trying to figure out what carpet to buy, I had a number of considerations. I was not able to get anything that was pure back or ultra fresh just because the where I live is fairly remote and the cost to import the small amount of carpeting I was going to need for this project was a little unreasonable. I did have to opt for a Stain Master Pet Protect product from Lowe's. It is CRI Green Label certified and that was the, like the best I figured I could do. And I had to keep in mind the original scratching post. I don't know where the carpet came from that was on that. And it was probably not a, le a low VOC um, carpet. It is a 10 year old scratching post. It was originally the scratching post for um, Juniper and Hobbs who have since passed. So I went with what I could find. And so I bought two feet. It was 12, it was automatically 12 feet long. The carpet cost me about $60. I'm gonna be able to get more than one project out of this for the cats. And honestly, if I could have found a new scratching post for Baxter, it would have cost at least $40. So I do think that this was a good choice. Uh, BobVilla.com is where I got finally the name of a carpet brand that was both affordable and attainable. So I'm gonna get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up this carpet. You wanna use a utility blade and you wanna just be careful that you don't press too hard so you don't damage the carpet. It should be noted that I've never done a project like this before. So we're gonna be learning together today. So this is the carpet. And this is the part that I'm going to be replacing. So first things first, I am going to remove the carpeting from this and being very careful. And I hope I don't destroy this because like I said, this is Baxter's favorite scratch post and is quickly becoming Corey's favorite scratch post too. And I just feel so horrible if I destroyed it. I know that you truly might need is a pliers because there are there are some staples which means i'm probably gonna have to go out and get my staple gun i didn't i didn't think to grab it just very carefully as to not dig into the structure you can see that he has done a pretty good job of starting already which is putting some pressure on me to get this project done Now it looks like that this was attached all in the front here uh, 
primarily with staples. Okay, so the next step is gonna be, I'm gonna go and take this to the other room and vacuum because it looks like there's a lot of like little carpet fibers in here. And also there's, you know, cat hair and stuff that I'm gonna remove before I get started. I'm probably also gonna go and grab my staple gun. So I'll be right back. Took the vacuum to the barn and I'm gonna set that aside. So this is the piece that I'm replacing and I'm just gonna measure it so that I know how much of the carpet to cut. And it looks like it's gonna be a 10 inch wide strip to start. And then I'll cut the height of it down when I get it off of the larger roll. I'm gonna turn this over. So we'll mark it at 10. We'll just follow this mark I started and follow the line of the backing, which should be even all the way along the end. It looks like it was cut pretty evenly. I'll mark it and then I'll do a couple measures to um, just be sure. Be sure that this is 10 and this is 10. So that looks good. Since I'm doing this on my coffee table, I found a scrap piece of cardboard to put underneath while I cut so that I don't destroy my coffee table. Cause that is something I definitely would do. See how difficult this carpet is to cut. Not too bad. Follow the line. Probably cut away from yourself. Do not cut toward yourself. Basically watch me to figure out almost what not to do. So cutting away from myself. All right, that is reasonably following the lines. I will take this apart and roll and put it behind me. Next, we're going to measure for the length and I am just going to lay this down on the back here and measure like this. Cut away from myself. To be honest, it's easier to cut towards yourself, but also more dangerous. All right, so for this portion, I'm gonna use non-toxic Elmer's wood glue and some clamps. I am gonna try to figure out if I can use my staple gun. I'm hoping this works out well. I'm really hoping I don't destroy this because I would break Baxter's heart. Let's get this in place. I'm going to... Uh, attach it just like the other one was attached. And actually, and it looks like I messed up. So it's a good thing I have a huge roll. I'm going to remeasure and recut and I'll be right back. No, that's carpet. Now, because this is a small carpet project, the off-gassing probably isn't as important. I just was concerned about um, any chemicals that might be on the carpeting. But like I said, you make your own choices. I'm always trying to do whatever I can to try to keep the cats healthy and safe. You don't need those. I do hope that Baxter is gonna like the scratching post when it's done. Um, I'm a little concerned just because it's gonna have a different smell on it. What do you think, Baxter? What do you think? You gonna like your barn? Hmm? You gonna like your barn when it's done? Hmm? So I'm gonna start with a line of glue. Oh, I haven't decided yet. No, you can't. 
you got carpet on your face. Being a good boy. Mm -hmm. It is going to take a little work to stretch the carpet. Um, I cut it three quarters of an inch longer than the initial uh, piece I cut. So this is 10 and three quarters of an inch. Um, I think it's gonna be kind of tight. I am going to move the seam that used to be in the front off to the side, um, just to uh, make sure that next time he rips through it, Maybe it's not gonna get ripped through as much because I did notice that where his claws had ripped through it was where the seam was and he uses the scratching post primarily from the front and sometimes from the back here. So what I'm gonna do is take this wood glue and run some down the side and then I'm gonna do another bead of it from the top to the bottom. This is a little bit more I think than I wanted but it'll work. And then very tightly wrap it this way. And across the top, I'm going to use my clamp. And then again, across the bottom, just to fix this in place. Move this back a little bit away from the seam because I'm gonna be using the staple gun right here at the top. Better to set this on its side so that I can get a better angle. I feel like this is probably safer. Ooh, scared me. And then I'm just gonna go all the way down the side. I think about every inch or so until I get to the bottom. Get it right up in here at the very tippy top. And I think it's safe to say that I can take this off of here. And then also, it's probably safe to remove this one. It looks like it's a success. I'm gonna go and run the uh, vacuum cleaner hose over this, and then I'll see if Baxter likes it. video has been helpful for you in a couple different ways. I hope it illustrated how easy it is to fix one of your cat's favorite scratching posts that has carpet on it. It was much easier than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to use the end of this video as a little bit of an update on a vlog that I did about two months ago. It was about whiskey my ginger cat whose life I tried to save. I hadn't posted an update on YouTube yet. A lot of people on my social media knows the story. So if you know the story, you don't have to listen. Whiskey ultimately passed away on it was July 14th or 15th, two weeks after I had taken him into the vet. It was determined that an aggressive form of cancer had attacked his body. I spent two weeks feeding him a liquid diet in a tube that the vet had installed in his neck. He'd start putting on a little bit of weight, but it was actually his stomach cavity was filling up with fluid. He never ate another meal again. And in the end, it was just too, it was inhumane to keep him going. It probably was the hardest thing that I've had to do as an adult watch my cat die for two weeks, doing everything I could to save his life. In the end, the vet told me that there was nothing else I could have done. There was nothing else I could have done to save his life. And so I had him put down. I'm fortunate that I had those two weeks with him. That's something I hadn't had with my last two cats that passed away. This was the third cat that had passed away in two and a half years. and. Each time it has been something that just wasn't curable. 
cancer ravaging their bodies, organ failures, that kind of thing. But I am fortunate that I had two weeks to spend with him. I cried more in my entire life than those two weeks. In the end, he definitely knew he was loved. I would lay next to him on the floor and stare at him in his eyes and tell him about the day, the day I found him. I would tell him how brave and wonderful he was. When he passed away, I told him to come back to me, come find me again someday. Not necessarily that I believe in animal soul reincarnation, but I've never hoped for it so much. He did have feline leukemia when I found him, which drastically decreased his immune system. And there just was no fight left in his body. He had just gotten over a cold. All my cats had a cold about a month and a half prior to when he started getting sick. And there just was no way his body was gonna be able to fight it. <laughs> but because of the high cost of trying to save his life. I've never been more thankful to have, and this isn't a sponsored anything, but there is a, something called a care card out there that helps you make deferred payments on expensive health care, and it's not just for pets, it's, it's for humans too. <laughs> and also, I've just got health insurance for all three of my cats, and already for Baxter, who had some blood work done and he has to go back in a few months and get an ultrasound, which I am terrified about. It's already gonna be paying off a year of his health care. So hopefully going forward, the same kind of hardship that I've had with my last two cats' loss will be mitigated by, again, the care card, which I've had for a while and has helped me dramatically. But also, with any future problems I have, one, Corey likes to eat cardboard boxes and <laughs> my bra straps <laughs> and anything that's got elastic in it. And it's just a matter of time before he has to go in and have some sort of surgery. <sighs> so with each cat's passing, I've learned a lot more about being the most responsible pet parent that I can be. <laughs> and so that's the end of Whiskey and his story. <laughs> I rescued him. He was about a year and a half. I rescued him on the day after the coldest day there had been in Minnesota. He had been locked in an abandoned turkey shed with nothing to eat. He was skinny. I thought he was gonna die. I kept him alive over the weekend and got him to the vet. And he was, at the end of his life, the happiest, chubbiest, best cat, smartest cat that I could have ever asked for. He was Baxter's best friend. <laughs> Baxter's lost two of his best buddies. Now he is a very lonely guy. The kittens don't really like to play with him much. So he cries a lot. It's two months later and he's still looking around for whiskey. So I try to do everything I can to make him happy like repair his favorite scratching post that used to be his and Whiskey's favorite scratching post. And I hope he takes to it and doesn't reject it just because the silo smells a bit different. In any case, on to happier things. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you've learned anything at all, please leave a comment in the comment section. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share if you think it would be interesting to anybody else and if you haven't yet please subscribe to this channel so that you always know when i've dropped a new video and as always have a wonderful day Thank you.